Okay, so what we'll do is we'll have you write a TPS activity now. Okay, so now your goal is you have to create a TPS activity that leads students towards write a program to manage the contacts yes, on your phone. So they, there, there will be number of logics Speaking. can be used for a single problem. Huh. Number of methods are uh, for a single problem by this way. Yes. So students can use different logics, some other use different logics yes. like that. So yes. number of ways for a single solve problems. Exactly. More so that is exactly, so if you look at, so we have conducted experiments to find out, okay, is it really useful and all. And that's exactly a point which many students make, that within 20 minutes, I get to know five different ways of solving the problem, which I cannot know if the teacher is only going to tell me one way in great detail, okay? So let's come to this activity. Let's have you, no, no. So let's have you, talk about write a program to manage the contacts data on a phone so everybody has a phone <coughs> everybody has contacts now you tell your students that look you have to write a program which is going to manage the contacts data hmm? what will you write as the think face question what will you write as the pair face question what will you write as the share face question that's your challenge now okay so you can do it directly as a pair activity is the question clear to everybody you have to write the T, P and the S parts for this problem. Okay? You can discuss with each other and together write one. So I find that there are people who are still just in the first step. Okay? We need everybody to be doing something. Alright? So feel free to ask me a question if you have a if you need clarification on what is to be done. Sir, on the language uh, chosen, on which that has to be done. Okay. Does it matter on the language that is chosen? It it's your choice. Yeah. So, okay. That's one possibility. Huh. We are just uh, writing a pseudo code, hmm. so how to manage the code, first hmm. name, last name, and mobile number, email, and WhatsApp, whatever. Hmm. Then we have to discuss with each other okay, how to manage it, hmm. whether it is a group by or uh, whether it is a first name or the whole thing. And share face? And share face, we have to access with the which one is more efficient. Good one. Yeah, so uh, there's one more point that is coming out, which is that many people are saying that the same three things that you wrote for the earlier problem, think phase, pair phase, share phase, that will work for this one also. That's true, except that this is a much more nebulous problem. This is more of a design problem. That's very specific. So that can be done. That can be done in your five minutes or 10 minutes of, see, you don't want this TPS activity to take the entire class. You want to spend only about 2-3 minutes on the think phase, 5 minutes on the pair phase and 10 minutes on the share phase. You don't want to go beyond that. Okay? So while it's true that you can just simply say write the pseudocode, write the C++ code, compare with my program. That is true for every question in CS101. Okay? But try to come up with something which is slightly different from that. There are 2-3 groups which came up with different activities to do in think, pair and share phases. Okay, so now the third thing that we are doing is uh, TPS for contacts database. Okay, so think phase is what? Go ahead. In think phase, uh, we can individually think of the contact format and the possible operations individually. Hey, one minute, yeah, one by one. Huh. Pair phase. Uh, in pair phase, uh, we can uh, discuss the steps in for implementing the possible operations. And in share, uh, we can think of in what kind of real world applications we can use these operations implemented for managing contacts. Okay, so let me comment on each of these ideas as they come. So the, the think phase actually perfect in this case because we are just getting them to think about the contact format and possible operations. Everybody can do this. So that is the criteria that is being met. Pair phase again we are saying okay discuss the steps for the implementations fairly decent. Okay share phase real world applications it's actually a little disconnected from what they did in the pair phase. So they have to be connected in some way. Okay next. So sir uh, one more uh, 
how to store the multiple data in the thing phase how to store multiple data multiple data which phase in the thing phase only phase. in okay. the thing phase only we will in the thing phase we will identify the functionality or requirements for this problem and mm. then uh, during the pair phase uh, we will validate these requirements whether they are correct or not and finally in the share phase we will compile them together okay this is again a good uh, tps activity has been created for that problem because this is something that you want your students to be able to do well a, given a broad real world problem you want them to be able to say okay find out the functionality and requirement so uh, once again if you apply the test can every student do the think phase the answer in this case is yes they will be able to come up with some requirements okay can then together can they do validation so validation phase they will look at is it there have i missed out something has my neighbor found something else okay this so is again a good one yeah uh, sir in think phase hmm. we can ask simply to write a class with the or the required data members and operations okay which will do our job in pair phase what we can uh, say is without which data structure would be more appropriate uh, they can discuss about it with their partners and go on writing the whole program then okay in share phase we can we will ask them to exchange their works with the neighbors okay and then compare the works of your neighbor with the demo program okay and find out where it could have been more better okay good one next anybody else ha huh. So in the in phase, which hmm. data types are required, and how it can be stored in database? Uh, in pair phase, possible different ways to store the data, and in share phase, compare all these uh, answers and uh, find out the which one is the best. Hmm. So here again, let me illustrate. So the think phase is fine. You can say, okay, which data types are required. pair phase when you say different ways to store they, there should be a connection between the think and the pair because they should be building towards the solution pair phase question is slightly different ho gaya in this case ha huh. sir yeah. yeah sir when the problem is growing complex hmm. the tps activity can be made as think share and pair <laughs> because <laughs> okay so think pair and share reverse engineering problem is there because after sharing if i come to know my problem is wrong then i need to go back uh, with my pair i have to do okay so let me use this moment to say that there are many ways of doing think pair share there are ways where the share phase comes earlier what i told earlier as team pair solo that's one such mechanism where the share happens first okay yes, so right now we'll just restrict ourselves to think pair share okay so okay. think is decide the screen designs and navigation designs for the system and so pair is implement it implement these designs hmm and sir share is compare with the real time already developed applications okay so this again is a good uh, exercise if we have lot of time see what you want to keep in mind is when we say design the screen design good one then if you say implement it it's going to be hard to do that in 10 minutes So what you want to do is pick a smaller piece. So say design the screen design for update. So make it narrow enough so that people can attempt. Okay, somebody from that end. Sir, think uh, for the think uh, what I have written. What are the different functionalities required to manage the data? Huh. Then for pair, find the technical terms for the functionalities. technical term uh, for the functionalities and then for share compare with your neighbors and find the best functionalities okay so technical terms i don't understand how will finding the technical terms help in the pair phase so the think phase is fine you say find the different functionalities identify what are the different functionalities that are required for such an application for uh, like for gathering information ha huh. and then we have to store means we have to write create modify delete like this okay so the okay so you are saying in some sense it's also implement okay okay one last 
सर वन इन थिंक फेस वी कैन थिंक अबाउट द टाइप ऑफ कॉन्टेक्ट्स एंड सपोज अल्फा न्यूमेरिक्स एंड सम स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम अदर करेक्टर्स and pair phase uh, we can uh, we can pair like a uh, uh, family contacts uh, friend contacts and uh, colleagues contacts and uh, in share phase we can just we can compile and execute that uh, thank you sir hmm. okay so only one or two solutions which are very different from what we have already listed ha huh. individual thoughts uh, then uh, unique format then evolution hmm hmm Uh, sir we can ask them how would you like to arrange your contacts okay that is the which phase uh, sir think way think phase okay and then we can uh, give them something technical like we can uh, <coughs> say them how would you arrange these strings in array in the pair phase uh, yes sir with your partner uh. you write a program uh. to arrange these strings in array and sort them and finally you will discuss or compare in the share phase mm. okay okay so here again see so the side. each of those phases that you have said are good but there is a slight lack of connection between them okay uh, sir in the think phase we mm. can ask a question like find out an efficient technique to search a contact in minimum time and for the pair discussion we can ask which data structure can be appropriately selected to decrease the search time and with the help of partner try to implement that searching technique and in the share phase we can ask discuss the different search technique and analyze the most efficient one okay so this is again a good tps question but not for an introductory course okay so it, it is a second level question so in fact i don't have this question in my database and thank you for contributing that so it's sir, good when you do it in the second level course okay one last, last one last one sir okay every student is having a mobile phone ah. and just we can ask them how they will store the information of different contacts that okay. is in think phase that is already done somebody has already said that how would you like to arrange your contact and second one is uh, we can ask them how they will represent the same data in c++ right okay sir hmm. what is the format hmm. in which format they will represent in c++ hmm. and in third phase we can ask them to compare the okay. same structures with other members okay so this all of this has been already covered in some way or the other in the earlier one sir i just what to uh, would like to add to the think phase uh -huh. because most of them has got, made the good points in think phase we can ask uh, to how to manage the contacts with the multiple numbers single contact with the multiple numbers uh -huh. just for one name we have we can have multiple numbers one second no huh? think phase you are saying how to manage the contacts having the multiple numbers okay okay and in the pair phase uh, we can ask them to design the algorithm and also to uh, the sort the contacts in terms of, of some sort of alphabetical orders okay and in share phase it's similar to the others uh, who has made the comment already yeah. uh, we can ask them to validate the program with the other peer groups yeah okay so i'm going to stop here i i'm sure many of you also want to continue sharing we'll do that later we don't have uh, we have only about 10 minutes left so um, many such answers have come let's just do a quick count 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 10 10 more than 10 different answers we have already got okay now let's compare with my answer okay so this was the activity that i actually gave in the class so this many of you have come up with a similar activity okay many of you have come up with i am not saying that this is a good activity in fact some of the ones ideas that you have come up with are as good even better depending upon how much the students have already learned okay so here what you find is in the think phase you are saying how will you store the information so again something that everybody is able to get okay i am also uh, have got a feel from your answers that most of you have got how to do this okay pair phase again you are saying okay discuss with your neighbor agree on the class declarations and then together write the code 
Okay. Share phase, once again you are going to discuss solutions, compare different solutions and so on. So if you look at the answers that you came up with, there are many of them which more or less fall into this category. Okay. So which data types are there, different stores, write a class without methods, which data structure, all of these are more or less similar to this example that I have shown here. Okay. So good, pat yourself on the back for that. There are two other examples that I am not going to do, but they are there on the slide so that you can take a look at it later. So there are different goals, right? So in one case, the goal was a design problem. In this case, the goal is to get students to do some conceptual understanding of how sorting works. Okay? So when you have this goal, once again you can give a question like, write pseudocode for sorting an array. So this again is something which every student can get. If you say, okay, write the pseudocode for merge sort, how many students do you think will be able to do that? No, they'll get daunted. They'll feel, hey, what is this merge sort and all? But if you say, okay, write pseudocode to sort an array of numbers, everybody has done some sorting or the other, they will be able to write some code. Okay. So then in the pair phase, you say, okay, discuss your answers. In the share phase, we do a discussion. And this activity in my class, for example, led to a discussion of sorting algorithms and in, in about half an hour, we were able to go through the entire list of sorting algorithms by ideas generated from students themselves. Okay? So for conceptual understanding, it's a good thing. And it's also a good example for uh, doing detailing. So I'm going to skip these examples. I'm not going to spend time on that. Okay. So now, all this is fine. Is there data to show that this actually this idea actually works? So this is almost my last slide. So what I did was I taught this course for two years. And over two years we observed, we had students, we had our, like what Professor Fartak mentioned, we have our, had our education technology PhD students sitting in the audience, measuring, keeping track of, okay, who's paying attention, who's not paying attention, executing some protocols to measure how much engagement is there in the class. And then we also carried out tests to measure how much learning really happened. Okay, so these are the experiments that we did. And we found that this method ensures that 83% of the students on an average are mostly or fully engaged. Then, and the student's self-perception of is it interesting matches with our data. Okay, even if you look at learning, you find that, you no, know, we had two groups. One group, we did a TPS activity. In another group, I just did a very interactive lecture, but I didn't make them do a TPS. Okay? So again, we found that the experimental group which learned via the TPS performed much better than the control group in which I gave a brilliant lecture. See, that's the whole point. Like many of us always feel that I need to improve my lecture. That is not the point. Okay? There is only so far you can go with improving your lecture. Students learn when they practice. So the moment you bring something of practice into the classroom, that's when the learning happens. And that is what this experiment illustrates. And then we wrote up some papers about it. And if you are interested, you can find them there. OK. So this is my last slide. Huh, do we have those uh, resources? So we have some resources which will help you to write these uh, TPS activities. Okay, it's called a TPS activity constructor, which is being distributed around. You don't have to do that activity now, so you can look at it. And basically, we want three points to keep in mind. One is ensure that there is a clear deliverable for each phase, which drives the action in that phase. Second is ensure that the phases are logically connected, and the third is ensure that there is sufficient time. Okay. See, the important thing is that you will need to do in your own class is this, is to estimate this. So for example, in this class, what happened was at some point I said, okay, let's move on to discussion. And at some other point I said, okay, let's stop discussion and move on to the next topic. So that judgment is around when 80% of the class is finished. Okay. When you're not getting any more new ideas, you move on from the discussion. That's what happens. Okay. Now somebody had a question here. Actually, uh, the last phase is a share phase. Huh. So we need to have a complete engagement of the class. Huh. So how is it possible in five minutes? Huh, okay. So the question is, how is it possible to do the share phase in five minutes? 
Okay? So the answer is, it's really, if you think of it as I need to give every person a chance to speak, it's not possible. Okay? But if you think of it as I need to collect all the possible answers, it is possible. So that's like what we just now did. You write down saying that these are the answers. Typically you will find for any problem, people come up with four or five different varieties of answers. So once those four or five answers are done, you can stop the share face. Actually, uh, this is an active learning method. Yes. So there is a player who are really good at, but who don't share. Who actually don't share. And we are giving some demo array program. And we are asking every team to uh, you know, share their program or to exchange their program with that. Hmm. But this pair has not shared. OK, so what to do with pairs who refuse to share? OK, that's the question. So you see, the, you don't worry about outliers. OK. It's okay. Forget about that pair. No, sir. Uh, what ultimately is mm. uh, when this think pink and share, think uh, the share uh, has <coughs> done, ultimately the uh, optimized solution has to come out of the class. If that pair had the optimized solution with them, how and come? And they refuse to share. It's yeah. okay. That's what I'm saying. So maybe even in, even here, for example, there may be two people there who, despite all my best efforts, have not worked on anything that I said. They just worked on their mobiles. I can't do a thing about it. Let it go. Sir, uh, what will be the ideal time for each activity and what is the frequency of this particular activity to be conducted in 90 minute class? Okay, so what is the ideal time for each activity? So that's there on the slides. Typically the think phase should be uh, two minutes or so. Uh, let me just bring up that slide again. Okay, what did we have? Think phase takes one to three minutes. Okay, approximately. It should not be very long, otherwise people get bored, they lose track. Pair phase, 5 to 10 minutes, okay? Share phase, 10 to 20 minutes, approximately that. So if you say 20 minutes or maybe 25 minutes for one such activity, how many will fit in your class? In one, one hour session, you cannot do more than two. Maximum three. Three will become too difficult for your students because what you have, they're not used to it, no? They're not used to coming to class and thinking. They're used to coming to class and sleeping. So when you now make, make them think in the class, after two activities, they'll get tired. Okay, so two activities is generally the no. If we, if we do the same in the every lecture, what is the effect of it? Is it possible that if the, every time students are doing the same thing, so they get bored? Okay, if we repeat the same TPS activity in every lecture, what can happen? The see each time the problem is different. Okay, so you shouldn't go overboard. I mean, you don't create a TPS activity where TPS is not required. So maybe one lecture you do TPS, next lecture you do peer instruction, then a T lecture after that you come back to TPS. So mix it up. That's true. Okay. Sir, excuse me, sir. Sir, uh, here. Yeah. Who, where? Yeah. Huh. Okay. Sir, I've practiced this uh, scheme more or less in our class. Huh. And what happens is some students are, who are very good in uh, programming, suppose, they have some good ideas, but they do not share on their own. Okay. So what I do is I pick up those programs and discuss with all of the class and give them a credit that this person has done such a brilliant thing. So that works, actually. Correct. So again, identifying good solutions even if they have not voluntarily shared and highlighting them is a good strategy to follow for the share phase. Yeah. Sir, uh, how can we estimate the, the percentage of engagement in that class? What are the methodologies we, we have to calculate that? Okay, how can we estimate the uh, percentage the final of engagement? Final results. So we observe. Okay, so what happens is this, there is a technique to do that. It's outside the scope of this discussion. But the idea, in brief, what you have to do is you have to observe each student every 10 seconds, observe a group, then be able to generalize and all that. So there is a specific protocol to be followed, which we have evolved in order to come up with that number of 80%. Okay, anybody else? Huh. He's having a lecture class only for 50 minutes. Huh. So? So one activity is enough. Activity is enough. Okay, if your lecture class is only of 45-50 minutes, do only one TPS activity. That's enough. Do it somewhere. So what I usually do in a large class is the first slide I usually have a problem which is already there. Okay. So that's usually like a peer instruction question which is already there on the slide. So as students are walking in, they can look at it and they can start thinking about it. 
then we do some discussion. So there is a peer instruction activity for 10-15 minutes, then a TPS activity for another 20 minutes and that should, that is enough for a 45 minute class. Okay. That's Sir, hmm. uh, how uh, many times this method can be applied per subject? As many as you feel appropriate. But, uh, so I did it in 25 lectures, I did 25 such activities. Oh. Okay, something like that. It doesn't matter. So there is no rule about all these things. But students may get bored after 10 times or 15 times. Then stop doing. <laughs> hmm. Okay. So thank you very much, Prasidhar. I would like to make some concluding comments on this because this has been an extremely important exercise in IIT. People like me who have been teaching for more than 40 years have learned significantly from this, and we hope to incorporate many of these suggestions and ideas into actual practice through our 10,000 teachers that will be trained. First and foremost is about good lecturing. What he said is important to remember in the correct context. He said lecturing, good or bad alone, does not necessarily result in better learning. But I would like to mildly suggest that the converse, if interpreted in a very peculiar fashion, is not necessarily true. Namely, very bad lecturing with a lot of good interactive activity is not necessarily going to guarantee better. In fact, I think what we lack is the data about such active learning done jointly with very good lecturing and such activities done without very good lecturing. I think there is one data point there. So there is, although there is not much difference, there is some difference in the amount of learning. There is significant difference. So if you see, yes. huh. that, if that graph, if that you see, it is very valid. What yeah. Saying. Yeah. So if you see, there is very significant difference. So this, all this in the beginning, where 0.2 to 0.3 is bad lecturing, but a lot of activities. Huh. 0.6 to 0.7 is good lecturing and activities. Yeah. So good lecturing is a given. It is a given, yes, fine. <laughs> okay. The second point I want to make is, you remember our discussion that in the blended MOOCs, the local teacher will be engaged in problem solving and discussions and no lecturing. And there were questions ranging from, what will be my role as a local teacher? Is it important? To even a, a extreme question of someone, uh, will I be fired? I mean, will we lose our jobs? Okay, I had tried to tell you that on the contrary, the local teachers become more important because now they become the direct in charge of the delivery of learning to the students. And this talk today should tell you how important the local teacher is. In spite of having the best lectures online, in spite of having the best activities, etc., 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 the actual learning in the minds of students is happening because of you there, not because of the so-called expert from any one of the world's best places. So that is where the teacher is critical and important. That's what I would like. Thirdly, you would now notice that the group activity that I have planned actually borrows from the think pair share and expands on it in a slightly different way. So let me tell you what we have done. Sir, we have form yeah, sorry. Excuse me. Yeah. Here, sir. Yeah. Uh, sir, according to my college rules, uh, uh, students have to discuss with me only. Uh, if students discuss with other students in the sense, uh, they don't allow. If my principal see uh, in my class one student discussing with other students, obviously there is some noise. If my principal see this, uh, okay. they will give a memo for me. <laughs> This is the happening, uh, but this is the strict instruction. We should not allow the students inside the class to discuss. Okay. I have argued with my principal also, but you have to follow this. Uh, what like that, what uh, prevents you from doing the following? What prevents you from calling the students on a Sunday morning for discussion session outside the class? Have you uh, tried it? <laughs> Sunday morning. Uh, I will tell you. I was in I, actually I used to sleep in Sunday morning. <laughs> Please, okay. So I, although we are digressing, but let me tell you, there will be always rules of all kinds. But if the students and teacher wish to do something constructive, there is absolutely no rule on the face of earth that can come between you and students. 
See, also, no. let me also address that question. Yeah. So, also the point is, this is a very valid point, you know, because there's noise in the classroom and people think something strange is happening. So, the thing to do is to get your colleagues also to do that. Your principal cannot fire all of you. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> okay, anyway. So, uh, uh, let me, in the concluding thing, let me just inform Professor Sridhar Iyer about the activity that we have planned. So, what we have done is, we have formed a group of five or six coordinators. Uh, I have listed ten topics of CS101. And each of the group is supposed to do the following. They are supposed to frame a uh, programming problem, not a project, a programming problem, which can be either asked in an exam, or can be given as an example while teaching. Then they are supposed to write the program. Then they are supposed to set two quiz questions, multiple choice quiz questions, mentioning not only what is the right answer and what are the wrong answers, but explaining why the question is right and why the answer is right and wrong, etc. So this is the activity which each, each group does. Now there is a peer review process that will happen today afternoon, where all the submissions have been uploaded. And the groups which solve the same problem, they will look at each other's solutions. And their coordinate, they will comment within the group first, and then their coordinators will sit down to pick out the best activity, which is not necessarily the only one group. For example, one quiz question may come from one group, etc., etc., etc. And then tomorrow they will make presentations here of the best in their opinion and all other people will share. Additionally, all the submissions that have been made are shared with everybody to look at. Because quite independent of the peer review process, someone might find some example more interesting in the particular setting of his or her class back home. So this is what we are doing. Although technically we don't call it think, pair, share, because thinking is happening somewhere else. No, pairing, but, I, I, but, I but, but, but this is... Yeah. Now, do you realize the importance and usefulness of this activity? Okay. And as an added attraction, we are also getting very useful open source resources for the course for all of us to use later. So it's a double ban. I will conclude by one comment which somebody has made, uh, uh, tell jokes or something. So I'll tell you a joke that happened when I was a student. There was a, there was a teacher, a, a great mathematician, one Professor Paria, absolutely top notch, he was regarded as one of the top mathematicians then. But he was an extremely boring teacher. He would come to the class and uh, start writing a theorem and proving it and so on. And in his class, the decibel level would go from zero to whatever, whatever. People would start murmuring, talk, talking. In one day, he started, he wrote a theorem there, and the murmuring had just started, when he suddenly turned and said, I will now tell you a joke. <laughs> there was a pin drop silence in the class. <laughs> Everybody was shocked, you know, Professor Pariah is telling a joke. He says, and he said this very seriously, a cow has four legs, <laughs> a table has four legs, therefore table is cow. <laughs> now we will prove this theorem. <laughs> and he went back to his boss. People were so stunned, they just could not figure out what was happening. <laughs> they did not understand the joke. Some smile, some laugh. Actually, they maintained a lot of silence because of the perceived threat that he might come back and tell another joke. <laughs> <laughs> that weekend, there was another professor, Kaele, who used to help our debating team that we would bring out the points for our the next debate and then we'll discuss with him and so on. And when we were discussing that evening, uh, one of my uh, batchmates uh, just mentioned to Professor Kayale, you know, sir, very funny thing happened. The great Professor Paria cracked this joke. He, he did, and then we explained, he asked curiously what happened. And I told him that this is exactly what happened and how it happened. And he did this and he says, oh my God. You know, last week Professor Paria came to me and said, students somehow don't find my classes interesting, so what should I do? So I told him, tell them a joke. <laughs> So, a joke has to be delivered far more seriously than in this passion. <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> okay, thank you. Let's break for tea.